Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and today we're going to take a look at a couple of French military revolvers. Specifically, we have the early Model 1873, and then we have the, the later adopted Model 1892. Uh, these were the, the two revolvers that saw primary use in the French military uh, as cartridge guns. These are the two revolvers that France primarily used um, once they got away from uh, muzzle-loading and pin-fire revolvers. Basically, we'll start with the uh, 1873. There had been uh, a variety of different revolvers used by the French military, uh, primarily an 1858 model that used a pin-fire cartridge. And by 1873, after the end of the Franco-Prussian War, the French decided that they really needed to standardize on a nice modern sidearm. So they went through some trials, there were a number of guns that were tested. Ultimately, this is the model that was adopted. And it has a number of very interesting features to it. Um, a lot of people would disregard it simply because it's French. That would be foolish. This is actually a pretty neat gun. Uh, for one, uh, like I said, this is model 1873. So if you want to think about a comparison, the year that this was adopted and put into manufacture was the same year that the Colt Peacemaker was the high-tech revolver of the time. Well, the French Ordnance Revolver is a double-action gun. A little bit nicer to use in combat uh, than something that's single-action only. Uh, it certainly has its downsides, uh, primary one being the cartridge. This is a 45 caliber or 11 millimeter revolver, uh, but its original loading uh, was 180 grain bullet at a whopping 430 feet per second. Uh, so a pretty anemic cartridge. Uh, in 1890, they, they went back and did some more research and, and improved the cartridge. They went to 167 grain at 625 feet per second, which is a little better. That brings it up to about the level of a 32 auto. Uh, it's still not a particularly impressive cartridge. However, the revolver itself has some very neat features. Uh, we have a, a loading gate here. Put the gun on half cock, revolve the cylinder to check it or load it or unload it. As with the, uh, the Colt, this has a manual unloading lever. This one is not spring-loaded, so I hit your empty cartridges out. Now, where this starts to get interesting is disassembly. If I want to take this gun apart, uh, first thing I need to do is remove the center axis pin to take out the cylinder, and I do that. This screw is actually a spring-loaded button. When I push this in, it allows me to pull out the axis pin. This is actually a disassembly tool as well. You can see there's a screwdriver blade on the front. We'll use that for the next step of disassembly. Uh, once the, the pin is out, we can then remove our cylinder. Six rounds, fairly simple. Um, the cartridge for this was 11 millimeter by 17 rimmed. No particular common name for it. It wasn't used by any other firearms uh, outside of France, really. Now, to disassemble the lock work of the gun, we have one screw right here. I'm going to go ahead and use my axis pin tool to loosen this up. It was one of the conditions of the French testing that the gun could be disassembled in the field without use of special tools. So we take out our one screw and then the side plate of the gun. The side plate comes off. It's a little tight. There is actually a small notch cut right here and we again use our screwdriver to just pop that open that allows me to take off the side plate. The, right hand, or the left hand grip comes off and the whole lock work is exposed. And frankly the inside of this thing looks downright German. 
they actually went and put a full serial number on every single component in here, uh, which is kind of interesting to see. That's not particularly common. The other interesting bit we have in here is this lever. And this is a tensioner for the mainspring. So if I want to disassemble the lock work even further, my first step is to rotate that out. That takes the pressure off the mainspring, and I can pull it out very easily, which I think is a really clever idea to put in there. Um, there obviously, there are a couple other springs. Um, there's a sear spring and a trigger spring. Uh, but the mainspring is, is the biggest one. And so that allows us to take it out without any any particular trouble. And same for putting it back in. I'm going to hook it around there. And presto, it's in. And now it's tensioned. So, pretty cool. Put our grip back on. Replace the side plate. You know, they put a full serial number on the outside of the side plate. And they put another serial number but the same one, again, on the inside. Uh, really kind of overboard, maybe. Side plate goes on. Replace that screw. Axis, the cylinder, and then the axis pin back in place. There's the pin, and then our ejection rod snaps back over the, the top. There we have the Model 1892. French Ordnance Revolver. I'm sorry, Model 1873 French Ordnance Revolver. Now, over time, uh, it was realized that this was a fairly anemic caliber. Um, the French were developing small bore rifle cartridges and decided to look into a more modern pistol again. So, in 1892, uh, this was adopted, the Model 1892. Um, these were uh, in some ways fairly similar. Um, there was an early 1887 model of revolver that served kind of as the, the basis for this design. Uh, the factory at LaBelle was too busy making 1886 LaBelle rifles to produce their full contract of 1887 pistols, which ended up kind of being a good thing. Um, it meant they were allowed to refine the design a little bit more and ultimately adopt it in this form. Uh, the first difference you'll notice, this is smaller. Uh, this is chambered for an 8mm cartridge. It's often called 8mm LaBelle Revolver. That, in fact, was never an official name. The official name of this cartridge is simply Model 1892 Revolver Cartridge. Uh, it used a 122 grain bullet. Uh, shortly after it was adopted, it was switched from black powder over to smokeless, and at that point had a velocity of uh, 740 feet per second. So this is still a pretty wimpy round. Um, not really any worse than the, the previous 45 caliber, though. There are a number of other... It's interesting, this, this doesn't really have any of the same interesting features as the 1873, but it has some, some neat features of its own. Uh, for one, it has a rebounding hammer. You can see that after we drop... Check to make sure this is empty. It has a swing-out cylinder, which is empty. When one drops the firing pin, it fires all the way closed, and then when you release the trigger, the hammer comes back a bit. Um, that functions as uh, drop safety, so that pressing on the, the back of the hammer will not fire the gun if it's over a loaded cartridge. Uh, in addition, this, the hammer, moves slightly when I open the loading gate, brings the firing pin out of the way, and the trigger function then simply cycles the cylinder one, one slot at a time. Uh, so if you're reloading individually without dropping the whole cylinder out, uh, this is a, a more uniform way to do that rather than hand indexing the cylinder. Close the 
the loading cane. Uh, disassembly on the 1892 is a little bit different. We again have one screw. In this case, we don't have a special tool included in the gun, so we do have to use a regular screwdriver. And this screw is captive. As I unscrew it, you can see down here, we're opening up the side plate of the revolver. Get that all the way open. There we go. And then this particular design opens up like a door. And again, the grip's going to come off. Lock work is a little bit simpler. Uh, they've disposed with the 10,000 extra serial numbers inside. But it doesn't have some of the quick disassembly features that the uh, 1873 did. Um, it's, it's a more modern design but in some ways not as interesting a one. That's pretty much all there is to the internals of the 1892. Go ahead and put our grip back on. Fold the side plate back. Now this screw, this disassembly screw is captive which is a good thing, so you at least can't lose it accidentally. There you have it. That pretty much covers it for the 1892. Um, the 1892 revolver was actually in production until about 19, until 1927. Uh, they were still refurbishing these at the factory until 1930. Um, and they saw use extensively. Um, France certainly ended, you know, by that time had some more modern guns. Uh, they adopted a semi-auto in 1935. Um, but the 1892 revolver saw a lot of service in continuing years. Um, the French were, uh, had military forces floating around a lot of places in the world and were using a lot of obsolescent arms for some time. So I hope you've enjoyed watching, uh, learned a thing or two about some of these French revolvers. These are still available out there. Um, because they're French, a lot of people aren't looking to collect them, so they're available for those of us who can recognize that uh, they do have some real cool features. Uh, we would like to thank Greg at Allegheny Arsenal for providing us with the 1873 revolver. We appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. And uh, of course, you can check out Greg's site at mg34.com. He's got a lot of real cool uh, machine gun accessories, among other gun parts to pick up. Um, and lastly, we do have photos of these along with some of their ammunition that you can see in the vault. So, thanks for watching.